It is Thursday, January the 13th, 2022. Welcome to Woodstock City Council. This meeting is being held electronically in accordance with Section 238, Subsection 3.3 of the Municipal Act and Section 16.6.24 of the City of Woodstock Procedural Bylaw. This meeting is being live streamed to the City's YouTube channel and a recording will be posted on the City's website following the meeting. The meeting will also be broadcast on Rogers TV. An agenda of the meeting can be found on the city's website at the agendas, meetings, and minutes page. Councillors will be raising their hands in view of their webcam when moving a motion, requesting to speak, and when a vote is being taken. If a member of council is disconnected or having technical difficulties, we will take a recess in order to attempt to rectify the issue. If technical difficulties exist that prevent the meeting from continuing, the meeting will be adjourned and reconvened at a later time. If a councillor needs to leave the meeting at any time, they are requested to inform the clerk. And with that, I would like to welcome everyone and ask the councillors to turn on their web cameras and welcome to the first city council meeting of the year 2022. And uh, with that, we will start with disclosures of conflict of interest. And seeing none, and just looking for one more counselor here. Uh, looks like he's coming on. And I'll just ask that again, any conflicts of interest? Okay, hearing none. Uh, disclosures of new business. Matters arising from the minutes. Then we will go with the minutes from our last meeting held December 9th, 2021. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Lauder, that the minutes of the regular meeting of Woodstock City Council held on December 9th, 2021 be adopted. Thank you. Any errors or omissions in the minutes? Seeing none, you've heard the motion. All those in favor and carries unanimous. Uh, let's see, we have delegations today. We have uh, Monty Shillington on behalf of Ray Losey regarding the official plan amendment and what council has uh, been reviewing for the past year uh, regarding the additional residential units. Uh, welcome. Well, thank, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so I'm a, a construction litigator and, and a commercial lawyer litigator. And uh, my client, Ray Losey and Losey Homes, asked me if I could uh, make some submissions on his behalf today. Uh, Mr. Losey is a local housing developer, and he's been interested in uh, the implementation of the policy for these additional residential units or ARUs, and he wanted his voice to be heard on this issue. Uh, we value your time. I've prepared written submissions, and I don't intend to repeat the contents of those because I'm sure you've all read them. Uh, they, uh, but they cover some common themes that have been previously brought to the council's attention, like the need for ARUs and how they're a cost-effective, high-impact way of uh, moving the needle on the housing crisis and how they benefit both renters and new buyers and how this isn't a uh, greater Toronto area-centric issue. Uh, one of the things I did want to highlight on, though, is there was a question at the last council meeting uh, about the potential for legal challenges uh, once this zoning bylaw was passed and about the potential costs. And I thought I could bring my perspective and my client's perspective to this issue. Council like, you know, like, like to hear about that. Um, and it's, it's my submission that the Woodstock's proposed approach is out of step of that with other municipalities. And that this is something that is being discussed and noted in the local community. Um, and uh, to the outside, uh, it looks as if the city's proposal to exclude uh, ARUs from R1 zoning um, is in contradiction with the provincial policy. And that uh, the idea that it's being done just to allow time to, to study things is just uh, something that it, it's just an excuse to avoid uh, having to implement the provincial policy. So that's just something that an appearance uh, that's being talked about. Uh, and uh, if, uh, 
the zoning bylaws eventually pass that excludes these additional residential, residential units from R1 zones, uh, the first step might be um, that the ministry might seek to appeal it. Uh, this is not anything that's in the local people's hands to do that. Uh, but uh, if it's dramatically out of step with the rest of the province, you may get a ministry uh, looking at an appealing. Uh, the second implication would be that uh, there might be site specific applications uh, for zoning bylaw amendments if someone seeks to have something like an ARU in the zone one. And uh, at the last meeting, council was wondering if uh, there would be more appeals and more refusals. It's my submission that this would surely happen. Uh, this is a consequence of what would happen if ARUs are, are excluded from zone one. And uh, it's my submission, these would be more costly than normal appeals to the city uh, because the city wouldn't be able to rely on the uh, staff as expert witnesses in there. You'd have to go and retain an outsider if you could find one that would say that uh, the blanket exclusion of ARUs from zone one is in accordance with provincial policy and, and good planning policy. Uh, anyways, you've got my written submissions. Uh, Mr. Losey wanted his voice to be heard on this, and I do appreciate the opportunity to do that. I won't belabor the point, uh, but I just wanted to have a chance to speak to council and talk to that. I understand today is about the, the policy that goes in the official plan. It's not about the zoning bylaw. That's something that comes later. Although well, there is a draft that's circulated. Uh, but I guess what, what's being specifically asked is that council just give some thought to the implications of blanket exclusion of ARUs from zone one, that it might lead to more appeals that uh, that would cost money and, and may not be winnable by the city. And if no one has any questions, those are my submissions. I thank you for your time. Well, thank you. And uh, questions of council. Uh, let's see, Councillor Schadenberg. Yeah, from our mayor through to um, Mr. Shillington, your well-respected local lawyer, of course. I've known you for many days, back through high school and one yeah, school, WCI. Yeah. But my, my question is, because I know you're on the board for the United Way of Oxford as well, so you're, you're giving back to the community. What kind of a comparison can you make both as a representative of, of your builder and as yourself and being a member of the board for United Way, could you give for, for uh the necessity for, for housing in, in, in Woodstock to that level, additional residential okay. units uh, being the particular topic we're talking about today. Well, Council Shanberg asked me to take up one hand and put on another, and I gladly do that. Uh, United Way is always concerned about the, the homeless situation, and, and uh, although I haven't had any specific discussion with them about ARUs, it just seems to me, as someone who's been involved in this issue for many years, that you know, if you increase the rental housing market, that'll just move people up, right? Like people, I'm not saying that uh, that homeless people would would move into these things. It's far from it, but it would it would just by increasing the supply, you just create more room and everywhere. And increasing the housing supply can only help the situation. Uh, to give you any more anything more specific, uh, Mr. Shannon, I'd have to go and get direction from the United Way, but uh, uh, but they're in favor of overall, you know, improving housing. But today I'm here for uh, Mr. Losey. Yeah, I know. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, further questions of council? Seeing none, thank you very much. And uh, we'll be having a little more discussion on this uh, later when we get to uh, that item on the agenda under the planning reports. Thank you very much. Many, many thanks. Uh, let's see. Next up, we have uh, our consideration of the planning report. So this is in regards to the official plan amendment uh, regarding the additional residential units. So uh, looking for the motion to get that on the floor. And we'll go with Councillor Talbot. Did you want a second or first? No? Well, do, we can do a seconder uh, right now, or we can wait. Uh, we'll go with Councillor Lauder as a seconder. There we go. Go ahead, Councillor Talbot. Thank you. I'll move that Woodstock City Council advise the County of Oxford that the City of Woodstock supports the proposed amendments to the official plan related to additional residential units attached to report number CP 2022-24 as Appendix 2. Thank you. And uh, today we're joined by the uh, Director of Planning for Oxford County, Mr. Gordon Huff. Welcome. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I don't really have a lot to say. I mean, the report, uh, as you mentioned earlier in, in uh, 
when before Mr. Shillington spoke was that we've been at this for a while. Uh, the policies that are here are basically uh, from our last meeting in December, uh, public meeting, council meeting uh, on December 6th and 9th, respectively. Uh, we've gone back and taken some of the comments or looked at all of the comments that we received as a result of the, the uh, consultation process. We've, uh, in, in the report, I've identified a couple of really just minor changes that we've made uh, going forward. Uh, the plan from this point would be to take those policies, if they're endorsed by council here today, to prepare that, fine, that formal amendment for county council consideration in February. In the meantime, uh, we do have a draft of the zoning attached to this report, and we've attached the draft to a number of reports that have come forward to this point. But the plan would be that uh, you're not, you're not going to pass a zoning amendment until that official plan amendment gets finally approved uh, or adopted by county council. And then in the meantime, we'll be working on on with uh, city staff and ourselves to to jig that in a way that uh, everyone's content with, and I only say that because you know through the course of the commenting, uh, the building department had made some comments about whether or not there were some things in here that were more uh, building oriented as opposed to zoning oriented. So we'll be having those discussions, but what we'll be doing is bringing back that final amendment to you, uh, subsequent to county council's adoption of the uh, of the official plan amendment, and uh, then we'll have your your additional residential unit provisions uh, adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions of council? And was Councillor Accioni? Yes, thank you, Worship. Through to you, to uh, Mr. Uh, How. Uh, it's no no secret. I do object. I think we should allow it in our ones and kind of a lot more broadly, like the province says. But when you say the uh, county is going to be addressing it and everything else. Does that mean there's still a possibility of looking at certain R1 areas where it might be applicable? Or are we, is that off the table completely with the way it's formed right now? Uh, your worship, excuse me to that question. Uh, the policies, we believe the policies that we've drafted here are our high level enabling and uh, in keeping with the provincial direction that uh, allow opportunities for these uh, units to be uh, permitted across a, a broad, you know, the broad community. Uh, the direction we've received from council in the past is that the zoning that would implement these policies in Woodstock is going to be uh, more, more uh, of a phased in approach, I think is the, the way that we've been couching this. So to answer your question directly is that the zoning is really going to be the tool in the city of Woodstock's case, that's going to be the, the directive as to how these get uh, get implemented going forward. The policies themselves, I think, are broad enough because we, we intend to use a very similar policy approach countywide. So we've sure. drafted them that way to be uh, enabling enough, but also to provide enough uh, criteria to allow for uh, different approaches by different municipalities. So uh, again, the zoning that comes forward, uh, there's still, you know, from our perspective, we've had the public meetings as part of the, but will continue to be part of the discussion up until council approves an amendment. If I may continue, Your Worship, um, is there any time, kind of time frame to reassess this in the future? Something set in stone? Are we going to look at a year from now, two years from now? Uh, Your Worship, Further to that question, I would suggest that uh, at this point, we haven't included anything that suggests what the actual time period would be. That's probably more appropriate to be done at the zoning implementation level. So when you consider the zoning, ultimately as council, uh, consideration of what time period you want to fix to come back and look at this, would probably, that's what I would suggest would be the appropriate time to do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Further questions of council? Seeing none, uh, that's it for our delegations. So uh, you've heard the motion. All those in favor and opposed and motion carries. Thank you very much. And next we'll move on to consideration of correspondence. And we have correspondence from the city of St. Catharines regarding the national child care program. Councillor Accioni. Thank you, Your Worship. I uh, move that Woodstock City Council support the resolution from the City of St. Catharines requesting the provincial government to take the necessary steps to work with the federal government on a bilateral agreement to ensure the 
new national child care program being made available to Ontarians. And further, that this resolution be circulated to City of St. Catharines, the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, and the Honourable Ernie Hardiman, Oxford MPP. Thank you. And a seconder on that motion. Uh, Councillor Talbot and discussion. Councillor Accioni, or yep, yeah, go ahead and then we'll go Councillor Tate. Thank you very much. I like the way this read. Um, there certainly needs to be something done. Um, I know the hardships and everything I had growing up. My kids are well past this age, of course, but I certainly know young families, especially this day and age, forgetting the side effects of COVID, what they've done to the working families. Uh, this certainly should be uh, addressed quickly uh, and hopefully something affordable will be done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Tate. Yeah, through your chair, I was just going to um, ask because Councillor actually only brought it forward if he understood what the whole program was because this was basically a um, campaign issue that the Liberals brought forward and it doesn't take effect for at least five to 10 years. So did you want to explain to the um, public just so they're aware what the whole process was for this and the reason why you wanted to bring it forward? I believe that's exactly what I just said. Um, looking at what needs, no matter whose group brought this forward, um, it, it's just a, a simple case of affordable childcare. Thank you, go ahead, Councillor Tate. Yeah, just um, further to that, um, you need to read the whole thing and understand it. I'm not gonna support it because um, the province is working on their own. I think each province is working on their own. And this was a uh, um, item, it honestly will not take effect for five to 10 years. I don't think it benefits anything. Um, it's, it looks like a feel good um, motion, but I, I don't think it does anything. Thanks. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, you've heard the motion. All those in favor and opposed? And that one fails. Thank you. And uh, let's see, next we have uh, staff presentations. And uh, we have Mary Reed, the curator of the Woodstock Art Gallery. And we're also joined by Lynn Moyer, the uh, chair of the Woodstock uh, Advisory Board. And we have a presentation regarding the uh, uh, five-year strategic plan. And uh, welcome everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, Mary Birch and members of council. My name is Lynn Moyer and I am chair of the Woodstock Art Gallery Advisory Board. I am pleased to present to you the Woodstock Art Gallery's recently adopted five-year strategic plan, 2021 to 2026. The gallery's first strategic plan expired in 2020, and the COVID pandemic delayed the development of the new plan slightly. After developing and circulating an RFP to assist the board with the development of a new plan, consultant Catherine Motes was selected and by December 2020 fully engaged. Over the first half of 2021, Motes walked the advisory board's executive committee through the various strategic plan development stages, which included a re-examination of the gallery's mandate, mission, and vision statements, as well as several one-to-one -one and focus group meetings to glean valuable insights. I will now turn the presentation over to gallery director curator, Mary Reed who will outline the plan in greater detail. Thank you very much, Lynn. As mentioned as part of this process, the gallery updated the following guidelines. Our mandate, which is the, is the WAG's core functions, is now serving our region through our developing public programs, collections, exhibitions, and we are the leading resource for creativity. Our mission statement, which is what the WAG is, does, for whom, and why we exist, now reads, as the region's only public art gallery, the Woodstock Art Gallery fosters the well-being of our community 
by preserving our local artistic heritage and cult cultivating new expressions and experiences of art. And our vision statement, which is what the WAG intends to become over the next five years, and is the key high level transformations that the organization will commit to in order to successfully arrive in its future ready and relevant is the Woodstock Art Gallery will be integral to our community's well being and vibrancy by broadening appreciation of visual art and celebrating our region's diversity. Coming out of the feedback we received from our, st our stakeholders are the following five strategic initiatives. The first is equity, diversity, and inclusion. And from these two key directives, we have our sub ones, which are to prioritize equity, diversity, and inclusivity through all operations and to proactively and respectively engage a wider array of partners, audiences, board members, volunteers, and program participants. And then even in the last year, the gallery has been very intentional in increasing the representation of women, and hip hop artists in exhibitions, education, and collecting programs. As a result of this first initiative, the advisory board's last meeting for 2021, the following commitment to equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility was adopted. The Woodstock Art Gallery in its five-year strategic plan is committed to prioritizing equity, diversity, inclusivity, and access through all operations by proactively and respectfully engaging and collaborating with a wide array of partners, audiences, board members, volunteers, and program participants. The gallery acknowledges the complex and deeply embedded systemic barriers that continue to exist and recognize our responsibility to deliver inclusive and accessible exhibition and education programming while building and caring for a collection that reflects all facets of our community. The WAG strives to celebrate people of all backgrounds across age, ethnicity, race, color, culture, language, mental health, disability, learning style, religion, faith, socioeconomic status, marital status, sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity, as well as in differences in experiences, ideas, thoughts, values, and beliefs. In line with the gallery's vision of serving our whole community, the WAG is dedicated to being honest and transparent about where we are on our EDIA journey and encourages feedback to further our commitment. The Woodstock Art Gallery will continue to actively examine, learn, and work towards meaningful and lasting transformation. The second strategic initiative is capacity building. And this refers to space, resources, uh, human resources, time, and money. Over the next five years, the gallery will preserve the organization's change nimbleness through staff and board training, recruitment and succession planning that is proactive towards emerging trends and opportunities. As well as we will continue to grow part programming and partnerships and revenue generation opportunities by activating the development of the fourth floor. Number three is a direct result of the impact of COVID. The very quick adoption of digital drivers has positioned the gallery to embed digital dimensions into exhibition, education, and collection experiences, and to balance, and to balance this and work in tandem with physical in-person programming. And the gallery is already in the process of acquiring technologies and tools and training that support operational efficiencies and data-driven decision-making. And, we'll, uh, and we plan to build on the last two years of success to continue to grow our digital communications through marketing, advertising, and public relations to drive engagement and increase accessibility and, and fundraising. The fourth and fifth initiatives are carried over from the gallery's earlier plan. Through public engagement, the gallery will reinforce and grow the WAG's public profile through consistent and frequent expression of its identity. And for an example, we'll be leveraging the launch of our new logo to grow the public's familiarity with it, as well as, in, as, well as reinforcing our values and community benefits and contributions. The gallery will also sustain valued partnerships and pursue others that share the gallery's values and recognize the benefit of mutual investment and return. And activities that are already underway, the gallery is now reconceiving the membership program and its value exchange 
as well as proactively connecting with local community leaders and influences, influencers to grow the WAG's goodwill and reach in the community. And the last initiative is around demonstrating fiscal responsibility by attracting and securing a mix of long-term funding streams, both corporate, private, public, and self-generated, as well as strengthening the gallery's resil resilience through business continuity and sustainability through the proactive risk, risk mitigation and, and management. An important guiding document, this new five-year strategic plan positions the gallery on a clear path towards our 60th anniversary. It is also an important tool for fundraising through grant applications and foundation requests. In addition to this plan, a matrix has been developed that will be used for tracking against the strategic plan and will be part of the advisory board's meeting agendas every quarter. On behalf of the gallery's advisory board, I would like to extend our thanks to all of our contributors who provided valuable feedback and insights. I would also like to acknowledge the hard work and efforts of the consultant Catherine Motes, as well as the gallery's executive committee, which consisted of Lynn Moyer Chair, Judy, Judy Dent, past chair, Martha Gindrich, vice chair, Natasha Velovich, treasurer, and Brian Hadley, who is, a, who is our a past member, in seeing the strategic plan come to fruition. This document is a testament to the amount of growth that the gallery has achieved in the past five years and provides a solid foundation on which to string, spring forward into this brave new world. The plan is currently being made compliant, compliant with accessibility standards and will be placed on the gallery's website in the coming week. I want to thank you for your time and attention. Thank you very much for the presentation and uh, please extend our gratitude for all of the individuals that contributed to these efforts. Uh, questions of Council? Uh, Councillor Shadenberg. Thanks, all your worship. Yeah, a question through to our art, art gallery uh, curator, Mary Reed. First of all, I just want to let everyone know that they, they just heard her report and coming from the committee, but the full report of the full five-year strategic plan is on our agenda pages 58 to 76. So there's there's more to be read and more to be enjoyed if you want to look into your own personal research on, on the five-year strategic plan. <clears throat> One of the things that I found interesting, though, was that was the community feedback part where there's some pie charts and whatnot on the on the programming. It is very difficult to try to get a, a complete consensus of what the what the community might be thinking, Mary, when you when you look at the city of Woodstock and, and even beyond for the region of, of Woodstock to talk about the size and scope of what the art gallery is doing. So uh, through to the mayor, to the councillor, uh, thank you very much for those comments. We were we actually cast an extremely broad uh, net when we were looking at various people to contribute to the strategic plan. Um, so not only did uh, we can uh, we do a number of one to one meetings, we also broke down uh, you know contributors and partners uh, in areas such as artists and educators. And we actually purposefully tried to reach out to a few naysayers uh, to get uh, feedback in, in regards uh, to what the gallery can do to attract them and to interest them. So I have to say, you know, given that we did this over a period during a, a pandemic and all of our uh, meetings were either virtual or over the phone, I still feel that this is a very rich and valuable experience and really does help to, to set the tone of the organization as, as we move forward in the, in the next five years. So I appreciate the feedback, thank you. I know the mayor likes to put in his little plug for sponsorships and whatnot at different times, but uh, fundraising is very important. Receiving grants is very important because when it's all said and done, you'd like people to make a bit of a monetary uh, uh, contribution once they visit the uh, art gallery or even the museum across the street for that matter. But, but there isn't much of an admission charge, is there, Mary? Uh, through to the councillor's question, through, through to the mayor to the councillor's question. Uh, so the gallery is free, as is as is the museum. However, I'm very pleased to say that in the last year, we've actually broken many records in terms of our fundraising. Uh, just our past Giving Tuesday, we exceeded our expectations by raising over fifteen thousand dollars in individual donations. Uh, that's quite remarkable, given uh, when I started here eight years ago. Uh, you know, we were seeing individual donations sitting around a thousand dollars. We've also been 
been very successful in terms of a number of grant and foundation requests of which strategic plans such as this one that we've just developed are uh, essential in terms of applying for them. So uh, this is a very, very important tool for us uh, so we can continue to provide this service not only for the citizens of Woodstock, but you're quite right, quite right Councillor Schattenberg, uh, we do service all of, all, of, all of Oxford County as being the only public art gallery in the region. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Talbot. Thank you, Mary, for the, the presentation and for all the work that you and um, your board has gone through. And thank you to Lynn as well, too. I guess the saying, you come a long way, baby, um, to the art gallery is an understatement. I still remember um, going, or when the art gallery started in the basement of the library, and there was just a few paintings hung on some uh, movable walls, and, you know, the, it has just evolved so much. And without, not without controversy, of course, because not everybody sees the value um, um, in it, but um, I'm hoping with this five-year plan and um, the good work of yourself, your staff, and your board, um, it just keeps getting positive and just we can blow them all away with what, what you're up to. Anyways, congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Accioni. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through yourself to Miss Reed, of course, uh, big fan. You know that. I've never kept that a secret. I never really was involved much in the art gallery until you got involved. Coincidence, I'm not sure, but it's certainly become a fun place to attend and certainly encourage uh, you to keep doing a great job as well as the staff and everybody involved and keep involving the community the way you are and more and more people is uh, amazed by it as well. So great work, keep it up. Thank you. Many thanks. Thank you, Councillor Lauder. Thank you. Um, and I sit on that board and I just want to thank Mary for the presentation and thanks to the committee that worked on uh, developing this strategic plan and uh, the go forward for the future. Um, you and your staff are a great asset to this community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Tate. Yeah, just through the um, mayor, I just think we need to, every time you come to let everybody know what a great job you've done. And um, as Councillor Talbot said, it's come a long way and it has been absolutely amazing what you have done. I know I say this every time, but I think it needs to be repeated just in case somebody else new is watching, but you have done a fantastic job with it. Thank you. <laughs> I have this huge head now, so thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and I, I'd say make sure you uh, share some of that with uh, uh, your staff as well. And the unique programming, like you, you mentioned about the uh, rapid ability to uh, make changes during the current situations. Uh, a, a real testament to uh, the creativity of the people that we have here in the Friendly City. Uh, now, Councillor Petter, you better say at least one or two words so that this is, uh, everyone had their chance. I'm simply going to say ditto because everybody covered everything. Great job, Mary. And I won't speak about the sponsorship opportunities in depth as uh, Councillor Schattenberg reminded people of that. And we'll hear more about that uh, in the future. Uh, as, as we get into some of the, the budget process and presentations and welcome you back and the board back at that time. And uh, we won't be dealing with a motion at this point. So if there's no further discussion from council, we will deal with a, a motion on receiving this when we get a little further in the agenda. And uh, seeing nothing, thank you very much for your attendance today. And thank you very much, Lynn Moyer as well. And we'll move right along to the dotting of the I's and crossing of the T's for the 2022 capital budget that council approved in December. Councillor Petter. Yeah, I move that Woodstock City Council refer the report regarding the 2022 capital budget bylaw approval to the bylaw section of the agenda. Thank you and seconded by Councillor Accioni. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? and unanimous. 
And then next up, we have uh, the standard yearly delegation of powers and duties, uh, Councillor Talbot and a seconder, Councillor Accioni. I'll move that the Woodstock City Council, oh, sorry, I'll move that Woodstock City Council refer the report regarding delegation of signing authority to the bylaws section of the agenda and further that city policy GA 017 delegation of powers and duties be updated accordingly. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, you've heard the motion. All those in favor? And carries. Unanimous. And now we'll move along to the appointment of the acting mayor for the year 2022. And first off, I would like to uh, thank uh, Councillor Schattenberg for his uh, continued assistance. Uh, again, uh, you know, kind of a, a unique time for everybody. So maybe not as many opportunities uh, uh, out in the community events side, but uh, always on standby if uh, uh, I'm unable to, to be there to sign or to uh, chair a meeting. So thank you for that. And so for this uh, portion, I'll preside over the establishment of the term of office for the uh, new acting mayor. And then after that, we will hand the meeting over uh, to the clerk for the process of uh, the uh, nominations and voting and appointment. So looking for a motion from council to establish the term of office for acting mayor uh, as of January 13th, 2022 through to November the 14th, 2022. Looking for a mover and a seconder on that one. We'll go with Councillor Petter moving, Councillor Accioni seconding. Go ahead, Councillor Petter. Uh, I move that Woodstock City Council establish the term of office for the acting mayor to be January 13th, 2022 through to November 14th, 2022. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, you've heard the motion. All those in favor? And carries. Unanimous. And uh, now I will turn this over to our clerk, Amy Humphreys. Welcome. Great. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so as you mentioned, we will proceed with the election of the acting mayor for the remainder of the term of council. So each member of council is entitled to one vote and CAO David Creary will draw a name from a ballot box in the event of a tie and he's got that ballot box up in his office. Uh, so I will now accept nominations via email in this case since we're uh, virtual but duly moved and seconded for the position of acting mayor. Uh, now, I had received one nomination from Councillor Tate, seconded by Councillor Schattenberg in advance, uh, but are there any other further nominations that I have not received? I don't see anything in my email here, um, so seeing none. Uh, so Councillor Lauder has been nominated for the position. Uh, Councillor Lauder, are you willing to accept the nomination? Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Uh, so since we only have one nomination, then the motion on the floor would be that Councillor Lauder be appointed as the acting mayor for the term of January 13th, 2022 through to November 14th, 2022. And that's moved by Councillor Tate, seconded by Councillor Schattenberg. Um, all those in favor? Thank you, that motion carries. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, round of applause. Uh, uh, we'll see if uh, 2022, if things get back to uh, a little more normalcy, uh, you're old hat at this, you've, you've done this uh, previous term. And for the benefit of the viewers at home, uh, what we have been doing is uh, uh, sharing this position. It's, it's not uh, something where there's uh, additional pay or uh, uh, special perks that go with it, but it's a, a great learning opportunity and uh, the ability to have a backup in, in the event of uh, uh, myself being unavailable. And uh, what we've done and uh, in the past is uh, ensure that each uh, city councillor has an opportunity and that our city county councillors, we, we kind of leave them out of the mix as, as they have other assignments that are of course uh, weighing on them from our, our upper tier government. So uh, again, thank you uh, to each who has taken a turn at this and uh, thank you very much for accepting uh, the added responsibility, Councillor Lauder. So 
Now we have uh, some more appointments to make. We have a few vacancies at some of our uh, public committees and council has uh, some recommendation to fill those vacancies by volunteers in the community uh, for the remainder of this term. So looking for a mover and a seconder on uh, that. We'll go with uh, Councillor Accioni and a seconder will be uh, Councillor Schattenberg. Go ahead, Councillor Accioni. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself that Woodstock City Council approve the appointment of members of the public to committees as outlined in the report. Thank you very much. Uh, discussion? Seeing none. You, oh, go ahead, Councillor Schattenberg. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Mayor Birch. I guess my, my just a comment is uh, we had a number of uh, applications. I, I think it was something in the ranging of 25 different applicants for the three positions. Uh, and there are volunteer positions on very important advisory committees. And I've been a member of advisory committees in the past myself uh, before being on council. Great, great volunteer efforts uh, by these people. And I don't want to discourage anybody that, say, applied for a position this time around because uh, by November or December of this year, we'll be asking for, uh, obviously with the municipality, will be for new volunteers for the, for the next four years, because anybody who is just appointed to a committee is only going to be on for 10 or 11 months before they'd have to, in essence, reapply anyway for the next uh, four year right term. Thank you for that further discussion. Uh, Councillor Tate. Yeah, through the chair, just further to Councillor Schattenberg's comment. Um, I think I mentioned this at the beginning of this term, but I, I have found that the last two terms, the interest in our committees has grown and the amount of applications and the qualifications has uh, been tremendous. So that's uh, a plus for the city of Woodstock that more people are engaged and they want to be part of it. It is very difficult. And as, as Councillor Schattenberg said, don't be discouraged, but we get a lot of application for the advisory boards now, which is um, good news, but it is, it's really difficult to pick. Thanks. And thank you very much for that. And we saw the, the nodding of heads uh, of others around uh, council. So uh, very fitting remarks. Uh, anything further on this? Seeing none, all those in favor and approved unanimous and uh, uh, welcome aboard to those new members. You'll be in contact uh, very shortly with City Hall. Uh, let's see, moving along, we have uh, the Woodstock Art Gallery five-year strategic plan. And uh, looking for a mover, Councillor Lauder, and a seconder, Councillor Talbot. Thank you. Thank you. I'll move that Woodstock City Council receive the report and presentation regarding the Woodstock Art Gallery's five-year strategic plan. 2021 to 2026 as information. Thank you. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, you've heard the motion. All those in favor and carries, unanimous. And we have no notices of motion or new business today. So we'll get right to the bylaws and uh, Councillor Tate. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Lauder, that the following bylaws be given a first and second reading. 9511-22, a bylaw to adopt the 2022 capital budget for the City of Woodstock. 9512-22, a bylaw to provide for the delegation of powers and duties by Council in order to authorize the Director of Administrative Services to execute and sign certain documents on behalf of the Corporation of the City of Woodstock. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, you've heard the motion. All those in favor and carries unanimous. Councillor Tate. Uh, Move by myself, second by Councillor Lauder, that the following bylaws be giving a third and final read 9511 22, 9512 22. Thank you. Uh, you've heard the motion. All those in favor and carries unanimous. Now, I know that uh, Councillor Petter needs to sneak away, but uh, I'll give you an opportunity if you would like to uh, say anything before you leave. You can go ahead or you can sign off. Your choice. There we go. Uh, so we will start today with, uh, let's see, we'll go with uh, Councillor Lauder. Thank you. Um, last night, I attended the virtual uh, meeting for the downtown development uh, plan workshop. And uh, for you, 
for anyone who would like to keep informed and, and complete the survey, just go to www.letstalkwoodstock.ca and uh, you will get your name on. The information might not be there for a couple of weeks, but at least you can get your name on, I've been told, and you will be notified of any of the updates. And the other thing is the art gallery through a generous donation from Toyota again this year are able to be doing the art grab bag giveaway for the family day uh, long weekend on Saturday, February the 19th, 10 a.m. until the supplies last. This is very popular. And so you do have to get there on time and um, if people really enjoy this. And the gallery is busy updating the website that the new art activities, et cetera, to make sure, you know, just make sure you check out all the things that's happening there. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let's see, Councillor Accioni. Thank you. Uh, last night was quite interesting. Um, it was about three hours of um, good discussion. There was a lot of public on there. There was mentioning things about the downtown development workshop and I was kind of glad to hear that. Uh, so I want to thank everybody that was involved and in, uh, looking forward to learning more and get people's thoughts and opinions uh, moving forward with the downtown. Uh, I hope everybody had a, a great New Year's. Uh, just remember snow tires, be safe out there. Roads are going to be slippery and um, be safe as far as uh, COVID, of course, and keep your distance, but um, just be safe, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Schattenberg. Yeah, thanks a lot. I did also participate last night in the Renew at Downtown uh, Woodstock uh, program. Here's part of the program. The moderators did a terrific job. It kind of started with some true and false questions and some, some multiple choice questions to get an idea as to maybe where the consensus of everyone stood. Good participation from downtown business people, BIA people, and, and just the general public too. So it was an exceptional sort of online uh, program. Since I'm here to uh, represent the uh, sports world and give you a sports update, I will. Oxford County does have a uh, an Olympian, Alice Shelton of Ingersoll is going to be participating with Team Canada at the Winter Olympics in China. She made the 23-person roster for Canada's women's Olympic hockey team, has been a, really a member of Canada's uh, women's Olympic team or, or national team program for, for quite some time now, well over well over a year um, being on that is under 18 or under 22 world championship. She uh, competed in as well with uh, Team Canada. But what's important about Ella Shelton, Mr. Sure from Ingersoll, Salford area, but she went to uh, St. Mary's High School in, in, in Woodstock. She did and played a lot of hockey, London Devilettes growing up and whatnot. So been an elite athlete, two-time NCAA champion too at Clarkson University. They're called the Golden Knights, just like the Vegas Golden Knights are in the NHL. So congratulations to Ella. And I want to thank uh, Trevor Birch and everyone at City Hall for my time as, as acting mayor, as he alluded to it. Not a lot of work uh, last year. COVID continues to be a time where there's not a lot of ribbons to cut or babies to kiss, as we kind of sort of say with the different uh, programs going on. But uh, I'm looking forward to Connie Lauder having an opportunity to do one last year. Connie's been very busy. She goes to county council when one of the current county councillors can't make it. She's on boards for the museum, the library, uh, also community grants committee, which she gets a lot of uh, press on that at those times, and a uh, past chair of the Woodstock Hospital Foundation. But she's also a very good contract negotiator. Now here's where I'm going to be stretching things a little bit. She's a very good contract negotiator. She's a competitive and avid bridge player. So she's uh, got that big uh, hobby as well. And talking about crossing bridges, she likes to walk the trails too. So there's another bridge connection to, to uh, Connie Lauder in, in City Hall. So um, good luck with Connie for this 2022 as being the acting mayor. Thanks. I just have to say thank you, uh, Mark, and um, I'm looking forward to the job. <laughs> thank you. And uh, let's see, Councillor Talbot. Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, congratulations, Connie. You've, it's a job you've done before and done it very well. Um, I just want to uh, bring attention. I had someone uh, from the community email me earlier today in regards to where they could pick up rapid tests that um, supposedly they're um, going to be distributed by the government. And so I reached out to the CEO of Southwestern Public Health, Cynthia John, St. John, and I received her reply. 
And uh, unfortunately, they haven't been informed on how the Ontario government intends to make rapid antigen tests available to the general public. They are going to be supplying them, she believes, um, to the schools next week. Um, and they announced yesterday that all Ministry of Education funded schools will receive them for their staff and their students. But beyond that, Southwestern Public Health has not been informed. So that's just an FYI. And the concern was um, because of uh, the amount of cases that have been coming out. But she does believe that some of the pharmacies are selling them. So if you feel you need them, that would probably be the best place to check. Anyways, other than that, just want to wish the community a happy new year. Let's hope 2022 um, is, a, is a good year. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Tate. <clears throat> yeah, um, I think we didn't mention this the last time, but um, now that we've done elected Councillor Lauder is our deputy mayor, Councillor um, Talbot is also our deputy warden. So we have women running the city and the county, just so you know. <laughs> um, just a, another comment about um, I'm glad Councillor um, Schanberg mentioned our newest Olympian. Um, some other good news is I'm not sure if everybody's aware of Ali Goodman. Uh, John and Jill Goodman's daughter is over in Paris in the um, Moulin Rouge, <clears throat> which has been in existence for 130 years, very competitive, um, well done by her. It is a very, very big deal. I um, haven't seen a lot of press about it, but I know Rogers was doing something like that. So congratulations to her. That's a lot of work and good for her. Um, just my final comment. Um, when we're doing budget, just uh, for the public to take notice of our budget when sometimes we get a hard time, we did our county budget and we added 26 full-time employees. Six of those were directly from the um, tax base. Mind you, all of it comes from the taxpayer, but that was directly from the tax base. So just keep that in mind when we start ours. Uh, Councillor Lauder, myself, and Councillor Birch were able to remove one item yesterday, but um, very large budget. And um, if you get a chance, you should watch the meeting. It would be very educational. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, again, I think uh, we've, we've heard already about the uh, streetscape master plan for downtown and the uh, engagement that we're looking for from the community. And uh, uh, hearing from uh, some of the people in the community again, the uh, uh, misconceptions over uh, spheres of jurisdiction. So uh, for the benefit of those listening and share this with others that you know, that as we're looking at our, our downtown master plan, things like where crosswalk should be, how parking should be handled as we continue to grow, uh, amenities that should be added to uh, our public spaces as we look at uh, expanding our museum square. Other items like that that are, are planning for the future. Uh, we've heard again about some of the uh, social issues that uh, are visible and evident uh, and that the city should uh, work on those items first uh, before we do some of this stuff. And uh, just a reminder, uh, Although everyone here on this council, we've, we've spoke about those items regarding uh, uh, homelessness and transient issues and mental health and addiction and, and what's been going on. Uh, it's, it's outside of the city's uh, jurisdiction. We have uh, government agencies, we have the County of Oxford. Uh, so the, the work of the city, we, we continue to have that uh, in, in uh, the back of our mind as we do all of this work, but uh, we need to differentiate between uh, the two items. It's, it's not that uh, the city should do something uh, regarding that issue before we go ahead and, and plan for the future of, of the downtown. Uh, we, we work independently on those items. And uh, I know, I, I don't wanna put words in the mouth of everyone here, but uh, I know each councillor has spoke about this in the past and uh, uh, the concern and the need we have as a community uh, for those uh, social services to uh, uh, have that impact. Uh, with that, uh, I would say that uh, I agree. I hope that uh, the year 2022 will be a much better year for, for all in the friendly city. And uh, 
the, the hard work of council, of staff, and uh, again, all of those different uh, volunteers that come along and, and give advice on those committees and uh, answer surveys. And uh, staff, we gave staff the, uh, the official dotting of the I's and crossing of the T's so they can get to work on some of those capital projects this year, getting the tender documents ready. Uh, so look in the future for those uh, uh, new amenities and improved amenities and some of our recreation and parks facilities, as well as some of the uh, hard assets and uh, those detours that will be coming up this summer as we start to dig up some of those uh, streets and doing the new uh, pipes in the ground and the infrastructure for uh, the benefit of everyone. Uh, we'll be starting into our revenue fund budgets uh, uh, in the coming meetings in February and March, and uh, we'll hear back more on updates from department heads. And as always, as the senior levels of government and the uh, public health agency for our area, Southwest Public Health, have changes or notices regarding the pandemic, the, the city will do its best to keep citizens informed of how that impacts them on any of the services and programs that we offer. So please check the city website and we still have that COVID-19 impact section where you can see all of the latest and greatest uh, on how uh, we're handling that. So. Thank you, everyone. And uh, with that, I would go to Councillor Tate for a motion to adjourn. Okay, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Lauder that the open session of the portion, oh, sorry, the open session portion of the meeting adjourn at 2.26 p.m. and for that council reconvene in closed session for the consideration of matters related to labor relations or employee negotiations. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, you've heard the motion. All those in favor? And 